So hey everyone, I'm Kelly from Dye DIY and in this video I'm going to show you my practical and effective way of rinsing and washing out your tie-dye so that it is bright and clear and colour fast and I've been doing this for many many years with no issues. So there's a lot of conflicting advice out there, firstly because there are lots of different dyes, um, but mostly because people get their, you know, their personal preferences and maybe have a little bit of magical thinking about what works best. But I'm going to cut through all of that and just show you the quickest way that works with the least steps and a minimum of mess and fuss because I'm all about keeping things simple and straightforward. So this is how you rinse and wash fibre active dyes like Procyon and Tulip. And realistically, they are the best dyes for tie dyeing. So you should be using them if you're doing any amount of work. If you have used other dyes, check against their instructions because they might be different. So before you start, first things first, put on your gloves. So I know lots of people don't wear gloves, but unless you actually like having murky stained hands, then wear the gloves. And also make sure you've got something old on because you might get splashes on yourself and it can be a bit messy. All right, let's get started. Okay, so after your dyes have set in a warm place for 24 hours or so, it is time to rinse them out. So start rinsing in cold. For this step, we want to rinse out all of the soda ash and most of the excess dye. We leave it folded or tied because there is a small chance of running dye could stain other areas, but this is usually only if you've been really heavy handed with the dye and soda ash. As you can see, a lot of the dye will come out, but don't freak out because the dye that has stuck to the fabric has stuck permanently. You can't rinse it all out. So now the soda ash and a lot of the excess dye has rinsed out, you can untie and unfold and keep rinsing. You can have a look at your results now, just remember that when it's washed and dried it will be a lot lighter. When most of the dye has rinsed out, then switch to hot water. This will rinse out a lot more dye and the heat will help to set any remaining dye and prevent running in the future. Squeeze it out but don't wring it because you don't want to stretch it. Now you don't need the water to be completely clear because you would be here all day. When it is mostly clear, it's time for the machine wash and that will finish it off. So you can throw in other rinsed items to about half of a full load and if I'm dying for the family, I'll throw in our black clothes, our synthetic running gear and anything that won't be affected by the dye. Then you set it to wash on hot with a cold rinse, 60 degrees is fine. If you don't have a temperature setting on your washing machine, straight hot water from your hot water service is fine too. Put in the normal amount of detergent, any brand seems to work, and press start. And once they're washed, hang to dry as normal. You can use a dryer, but I've never owned one, so line drying is perfectly fine. And that's it. That is really all you need to do. But if you've read around online, you're probably thinking that it seems to be missing a few steps that others swear are essential. So one of those is Blue Dawn dishwashing liquid. Lots of people will soak or rinse in water with Blue Dawn. They say that the pH neutral soap will pull dye out and keep the colours from bleeding and they do this until there is no dye left in the fabric. So it is a pretty labour intensive and water intensive process. So I'm Australian, I can't buy Blue Dawn here, but I experimented with the same sort of thing and it actually made no difference. So it was just another step and another thing to buy. So I ditched that idea. Uh, the same goes for Synthropol, which is a professional textile detergent. I was going to buy some from overseas and when I saw how much shipping it would add to my order, I took it right back out of the cart. But again, my normal hippie grey water safe laundry powder works just fine. I don't actually need a specialist textile detergent because I'm not running a tie-dye factory and washing out 500 or more shirts a day. So my conclusion after lots of years of experimenting is that you need the cold rinse because you need to remove the soda ash and the majority of the dye and stop that reaction process. You need the hot rinse because it removes more dye and it also helps with final setting because the dyes work better at a higher temperature. I have had problems with colours running if I skip the hot rinse. You need to get most but not all of the dye out with rinses because you don't want them swishing around in really intensely dye filled water in the washing machine. And finally, just to finish it off, you need the hot machine wash with a cold rinse with some decent agitation. And that just gets all the last little bits of dye out of the fabric for good. And realistically, that's it. That is all you need to wash tie dye properly so you get bright color fast colors. 
So if you found this helpful, uh, please like this video, leave me a comment and follow for more tie-dyeing videos. And I hope you now have a really nice and simple, but also effective washing out routine that leaves you more time for more dyeing. So I'll see you next time.